but you didn't you never answered it so we wasn't able to connect yesterday but i guess we're connect i guess we're I, I i think i was supposed to i think what's weird is i actually was like i actually had myself set up and ready for you but i didn't know that um you texted me for some reason because i was driving also but i made sure like i was in the area where i was good oh okay okay so, who, who is that dj like that going on lockout men back again with another podcast for you guys welcome to the lockout men podcast show that's what's up that's what's up how y'all doing today i am lockout men y'all know who i am if you like content like this and more don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell for more you know what i'm saying that's what i do for you guys you know all right, so today we have a special guest in the building, you know, another podcast interview for you guys today. And this young lady, she's a driver. How long you been driving? Ten years. How many years? Ten. Oh, you've been driving for ten years. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Ten years, man. All right, all right. Well, I like to bring... Uh oh, I got a lot of I got a lot of things popping off over here. Well, I like to bring to the show Miss Sunshine Martin. Sunshine Martin. What's going on? So where where are you on your way to? Where where are you on your way to right now? Um Corona, Corona California. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So, uh, tell the viewers and the listeners a little bit about yourself. Um, California native. Um, down from the Caribbean, Antigua, to be precise. Um, I am on a job attack for ten years, as I said earlier. Um, company driver. Um. What else? Um, what else you want to know? Oh, okay, okay. So, so you've been rocking out for uh, for ten years. So, where are you from? I mean, you know, where 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 are you from? I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Oh, okay, okay, okay. California girl. Okay, okay. That's what's up. How, no, how was I'm not it? A California girl. How how was it? I'm not a California girl. How? I was raised like a California. Girl, but I am—I um, was born and raised in California. I was raised like the island girl. You know what I mean, I don't—I don't, I don't, I don't oh. rock the same as this California. Hold, hold on, right quick. Hold, hold on, right quick. You—you—you you, you, you talking to me via Bluetooth, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you need me to speak up. I'm sorry. I'm, I actually been like I'm a, I actually do live streaming too, so. Uh, and I'll be kind of turned in my live stream, so I've lost my voice a little. So I'm real light on my voice right now. I'm trying not to laugh and yell, because you, know you know I'm loud. So I've been really quiet, trying to get my voice back. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a little but, yeah, yeah, it's um, a little it's it's a little uh you know, it's it's like it's a lot of stuff going on in the background, but it's also interfering with, with your voice. But I understand that because you're you're driving right now, right? Oh, uh, so it's is this my background noise? I can try and turn my books off and turn back on and it just be a reconnect. Uh I mean, it's. I, I mean, it's. Can try that I mean, it's. Good? It sounds good. I mean, it sounds good when you, you know, when you talk up a little bit. But it sounds like you got. Okay. Like, it sounds like you got like some chirping noise in the background and all like that, you know. But uh. Okay. But you okay? So you say you was born and raised in uh Los Angeles, California. But you said something about a be, um, being an island girl or something like that. Yeah, my. My mom is from Antigua. My dad is from Justin Dyke, VVI. 
But um, so, but my I don't really know my dad like that. So I, I was raised by my mom. Okay. Um, so I was raised by my mom and my mom. My mom's a foreigner, so she don't really see. She don't really, you know, she don't, she ain't like American women. So in order for me to be a Cali girl, I gotta be raised like a with a Cali woman. So I'm not no Cali girl. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So. So you so instead of saying that you was raised I'm, raised as a California girl, you was raised as an island girl because of your mom's from yeah. the islands. You know, she brought Yeah, I was, I was raised like that. Yeah, she brought the two So she, like my morals are different, my views are different. Right, right. My, the way I eat is different normally, but I think it's kind of similar, but it's it's the way you, you know, it's the way you move. You move a little bit. A little yeah, bit way I, move, I move a lot different from most Cali. Right, 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 right. But um, but you was born and raised in Los Angeles all your all your life. What was life like? Uh, right. What was life like? Uh, lost. Uh, being in Los Angeles. What was life like back then? Um, for me, I, I'm. You know, I think everyone has a different experience. Like that. When we, we, we ask someone out, they're going to be like, everyone going to have their own different experience. And it's always, they and they all was in the same area as me. My mom may have me in the house a lot more. So I was, I'm a, which is why I'm a homebody now or whatever. So I don't, you know, I'm like, I don't really have too much of a bad experience until um, I became like an adult, really. No, I, I, really I couldn't really tell you too much of anything. About LA, I didn't see a lot of the killings that people say they saw. I didn't, you know, I saw, I had one, one incident where um, a cop put a gun on us when we were kids, mm -hmm. you know, and that one was due to my, uh, my neighbor, my neighbor calling the cops on us what, for no reason. Just what happened? Being, just being a, a BIT blank. What, what happened? Nothing. What, we were, what happened? What well, ba well, basically, Basically, uh, all I remember is that we were at the house. So we're playing, and me and my sisters run out of the house. My, my, younger, my younger sister ran out of the house. And next thing you know, I see like a, a red dot, you know, and we all know what a red dot is. That's a, you know, that's a gun point. That's like a gun point at your head, you know. Mm -hmm. So they had that little laser, whatever thing playing in our head and me and my sister I saw the one my sister my sister was like look at one on me and we were like why are you freaking out and my mom like she she go runs out like no 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 and then you know we come outside and everything and they, they bring us down the street to my neighbor's house and I was told up and they said we were told there was some guns some gun shooting or something like that over here, you know, and that somebody was in danger. And, you know, it was kind of, you know, for kids, that's like, that was like, you know, stuff like for kids, because, you know, you don't even know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. You don't know. You know the police is like your hero, so. Okay, okay. But, so, you know, but it was, it was, it was a, it was a, a hoax, basically. Somebody, in my neighborhood, actually did it. Somebody that really didn't rock with us like that did it. Oh, okay, so you so it was an unfortunate situation that you guys was caught up in, but uh, it, but in the end of it, in the end of it all, it all worked out for the better, right? Yeah, in the end, it worked out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, are you still are you still living in Los Angeles, California? For now, I live. Well, I live near Los Angeles. I'm but, further, uh, further north. But. but you're still in California, though. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, coming up, uh, before trucking and everything, what 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 was you doing before you got into trucking? Hey, you I, I said before trucking, I said, what would you was doing before you got into trucking? Um, I did security. And along with security, I also got there. 
yeah, along with security, I also was, um, I also was, a, um, I was making clothes. I was going to put stuff in the box. You, so, I'm, I'm uh, sorry, you broke up a little bit. You, you was making clothes. You was doing what now? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to film a fashion design on the side. I used to do alterations and and uh, make clothes. I used to do um, fashion shows, fashion shows, and uh, costume shows and stuff like that. Hair shows. I used to make the costumes for certain hair shows, things like that. Okay, okay, okay. So with all that, with with all that being your background, what what made you get into trucking? Uh, my ex boyfriend. Huh? My ex boyfriend. My ex boyfriend at the time. Um, mind you, I didn't even have my driver's license when um when I met my ex boyfriend. I didn't have a driver's license or anything. I was basically like twenty some years old without a driver's license. So, um, you know, and I'm like I'm one of those people. I used to walk a lot. I used to take the bus a lot. I really didn't care. For a license because I could always get home on a bus, mm-hmm. you know. So California is almost like New York, except New York is like more twenty four hours. <laughs> well, LA is more like New York. Let me say that. So I didn't really worry about all that stuff, but um, he basically he um he was he was already a, a, a one of those trainers and stuff. Mm-hmm. For um, CR England, and he would come over by my house all the time and um, spend the night. And one day he just was like, kind of like you could see he was stressed out, and he said he was just tired, and you know he wanted to. He, we have we have we have been thinking about getting married and all this stuff, but it was problems with the baby mama issues, all that other crap, you know. And I just was like, you know what? I, why? Why can't I be your co driver? You tired of your other, um, your other boy? You know, at least it'll stay in the house if I'm your co driver. So I was supposed to be a co driver. I went to school. I went first. I went and got my license, and a few months later, I ended up, um, I ended up going to school for um, parking. And the funny thing is, when I got into as soon as I got, as soon as I went to start going to school for trucking, I dumped it. I, it was, I hate to say this, but it was kind of hard to follow that because it sounds like you got something in the background talking at the same time. Yeah, my navigation. I'm not sure about the stop in a minute. I'm here at my cuss right now. <laughs> oh, but I should have stopped on it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let, can let, this be edited? Let, let, let me. Can this be edited? Let, this gonna be edited or is this like live right now? No, this 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 is pre-recorded, but you know the sounds from your end. I can't I can't edit it out. It's actually going to be in the in in the in the podcast. I mean, the only I can I can I can like down the sound a little bit without muffling you out. But you know, it was. Can just, we start all over? And I'm like, hey. <laughs> Um, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't have, I don't have no problem. How, how far are you away from, uh, how far are you away from? I'm right here. I'm about to make this right turn and get my Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fine because, you know, if you can, you know, park, get settled a little bit and then, you know, take me off the Bluetooth right, then you, and you take take off the Bluetooth. I'm not going to be able to take off the Bluetooth because that's going to be worse. Huh? But um, I said Bluetooth is, is it's actually going to be worse without the Bluetooth, but what your, phone, what, your phone don't work? You, you can't talk on the phone? Like, on the phone? Like, have the phone up to your ear and talk? You, you Something wrong with the phone to do that? Because it's... I mean, it's an answer. Yeah, because see, okay, it's, I, I mean, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, it. yeah, because see, we it's a lot. It's, it it's it's just a lot of feedback going on, and it's just make it. It just makes for terrible audio. Feedback. 
Yeah. Like uh, like an echo. No, it, I mean you you I mean it's it, you it sounds like you got something going on in it. I hear the, I hear everything in the background. That's what I'm saying. Is you know if your if your headphones is supposed to be noise canceling, it's not doing a good job at that. I can tell you that right now. That's what I'm saying. Like right now, I think that was it. That was it. That was it right there. Yeah, see, it's, um, it's, no, it's, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it is. It's, it actually normally does. That's why I'm like something's wrong. That's why I was like maybe I should disconnect my Bluetooth. You know when well, you that's, you get something like well that uh, when you get something like uh, audio, another audio or something like that, it'll mess up your Bluetooth connection. Oh, uh, okay. Well, see that I, I don't have. I don't, I don't even do Bluetooth with with my phone anymore. You know the, you know I I got out of that trucker's stereotype with the with the with the. Bluetooth headset on. <laughs> yeah, I've been left that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you was to disconnect, well, you don't have to disconnect, but just turn off the Bluetooth and just talk to me through the phone, it'll make for better audio. I think I might be getting old and grumpy. I don't know. I just can't, I get irritated when people want to talk to me randomly now. Have whole, whole long conversations with me. Why you feel that way? I, well, I feel like I'm getting old and grumpy, or why do I feel like, why do I get irritated? Well, yeah, both. You know, I mean, you know, we all getting, we all getting old, you know, and, and grumpy is, <laughs> and grumpy is probably part of the, part of the onslaught of that but why do you feel irritated now that uh is it just is it just from random people or why why do you feel that way yeah no it's just certain people i think i i think i like that with men truck driver men too i do that with truck driver men more i know that. like i'll be like doing my work and it's ready and it's like just ready to have a comment no just no oh you waiting like me i don't want to talk to you you wasn't talking to that guy that was right there at the side of you. Don't, don't, no. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> you just, you, you just started, you just started feeling that way. Uh, um, through time, I felt that way. I, I think it's, and it's like in the beginning, I was real talkative, real friendly. But I just started feeling that way a little bit more and more. Because it's just, I got my little, I think I just got kind of like a little closed off by certain just by truck drivers, man. Like, I'm real friendly. It's weird because I'm very friendly. But as soon as I get to, what you know, being that I'm always at work and everything, when I'm around people that aren't very trucking or whatever, if it's like, you know, because, like, you know, like how I am on the app or whatever, like that, I talk to them. Like, those people I talk to on the regular if I see them or something like that. But as soon as I get in, get in work mode and I'm at customer and it's someone that's not someone that I've already met or whatever, or had a conversation with or whatever, and it's a truck driver, I'm immediately shut down. Like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> okay, okay, that's what's up. It's one thing, it's one, it's like, good morning, it's fine. Like, hi, good morning, you know, that that type of thing. But then when you want to have a conversation on the, the, the weather and all this stuff, no, mm -mm. nope. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Again, I get angry. I try to, I try to become the, the, uh, the stereotype of the angry black woman or the bitter black woman. <laughs> why, I, why do you feel? Why do you feel that way? Why, why, why would you? Why would you feel to be all? You know, be the, be the stereotype of a, of, of a. Because black woman. supposedly black, because when we're supposedly bitter, more people stand to stay away from us. So, it's like I kind of have to go inside and get that person out so that they can really think I am mean or something so they'll leave me alone. So, you feel that way because <laughs> you feel that way because of, uh, of a lot of gentlemen, uh, truck drivers trying to trying to shoot their shot at you, or you just, or you just, feel I don't that know way what is it. Somewhere. I just, okay. When he moves, thank you. No, I mean, when it's just a lot of 
Chuck Norris, they have, yeah, they, I don't know if it's because, you know, there's not a lot of women around or whatever, but they always want to have a whole lot of conversation for women or like want to help me, but they'd be a whole nother driver having hell of a trouble or whatever, or a whole nother driver that's right there that they can talk to, but they weren't talking to them until they got up here with me. Well, I mean, you know, some. I mean, you know, that's you, you know, relationships. Uh, try, try to build a relationship in trucking is is kind of hard because of because of because of women, you know, because of women not giving not giving the truck driver a chance to to talk to him. I mean, you know, I understand you. I understand you women being hit on all the time. I mean, you know, it's. It's like it's like taboo because you know me. I mean, it's 2020 now, and you know there's there's about a good number of women that's driving trucks now, you know. But it's still you know to right. some of these, but to some of these truck drivers out here, you know, to, to some of the males, you know, they're not used to seeing you know uh, uh, a nice looking female. You know, whether being black or white, they're not used to seeing a, a nice looking female. And they probably might not know how like, to approach right here, dude. You got to move. Like, come on, let's go. Didn't nobody tell you to sit there and stare watching over my motherfucking door. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> I got to drive. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> so, I need that spot, baby. So it's so it's so, I mean, so it's like that. You, like so do you get forever. so do you get I mean so do you get irritated a lot when when dudes talk to you or you just is there certain people I don't know why I people? just like I have I have had I built an anxiety in a way from after like after like dealing with uh after dealing with like men for a while, like, cause when I first came out here, I was so, I was friendly, you know, and I'm already the person that's very nurturing, so I'll be like, do shit like, cook for them, or not cook for everyone, like, I used to cook for all my co-drivers when I was, my co-workers when I was in, when I was at Swift, every time I came to the terminal, I was like, you know, I cooked in my truck, so I would bring food or whatever, go buy food and cook at the terminal. Or, like, when I was um, doing local at J.B. Hunt, same thing, did local. Did local and um, would go get lunch and everything, donuts, whatever it is, and bring it back to my co-drivers, you know? I mean, my co-workers. So, so I was fine with that, but it was like when, it, when I would get out into, like, to the customers, right? That was when I had the issues. You know, I don't know. Or maybe I just, when I'm in work mode, I'm in work mode and I don't want to be bothered. Unless you're somebody I know. I don't know what it is. But all I know is when I started, nah, that can't even be it. It got to be when I got, it got to, it has got to be like from this because before, I didn't really care about all that stuff. It's only recently like, from all all the jack offs from men and the be just being bugged so much, I think that's what did it. Like I got uh got aggravated by it and just was like, Leave me alone, like don't talk to me. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, I mean, do you still feel Okay, I'm almost done backing in so we can actually talk and everything. So, okay. I mean, like I was saying, it was just I think it just came from just through time, all the, the weird shit. And then, like, just kind of, like, I've never, you know, I don't really, I really didn't have, like, men growing up in life. So, you know, my, my dad, my dad wasn't around. So, like, my, 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 like, role models was my uncle. But he lived in Florida, and I lived in California, but it was more like whenever I was around them, that's who took treat me like their daughter. So growing up, so growing up in a single parent with your single parent household with your mother, how did that? How did that make you? How did that make you feel uh, growing up without your father around? Uh, how old was you when, when, when he left? 
I never knew my dad. I knew, I knew my dad, but I didn't know him until I actually meet him. And so I went to school and um, I was I was going to going to uh, job for for culinary, and I was supposed to um, take a trip. Like when he actually sent for me. No, my aunt. I'm sorry, my aunt sent for me. His sister sent for me, and she um, brought she um, sent me a ticket to go see him too. Okay, okay. Because she lives in she she well, she, she wanted me to take the ferry to go see him because he's in he's in Tortola, he's in Tortola, which is across the sea, mm-hmm. and she's in St. John, which is like you know, so it's just a ferry across. Okay. Okay. So again, I, I, so again, so you, you say you never grew up with with a male figure in your life. Your your mother never remarried or anything like that. I mean, she had boyfriends or whatever, and my sister's my sister's um dad, but I didn't really know. I don't really even remember my my sister's dad like that until like pictures but i don't really like i don't have memory of him like that oh, okay my baby sister does she did remember but i don't she still came back to my father's name like weirdly even after being married to my other sister's dad she came back to my father's name and i think it's because of the fact that um it's the antigua name okay that's what's up that's what's up before trucking what what you was doing before trucking again what 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 she was doing before trucking before trucking i was doing uh i was i was doing um i was i was going to school for fashion design and i was a security guard okay and um at the same time i was also doing alterations on the side and i used to uh like make palm gowns and uh, um, costumes. I used to do a lot of like for like for like uh, uh, hair shows and stuff. I used to do costumes for them. Oh, okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so mm-hmm. so what what was it that intrigued you to to, to jump into trucking? My ex boyfriend. He was. Um, he was going through what he was going through with his girlfriend. I mean, not his girlfriend, his baby mama. Okay. And um, just kind of, I just kind of was like, you know, like, you know, I, I felt for him pretty much, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He had, like, issues with her. Like, even though he was doing pretty well, he had a lot of problems with, you know, that side. And I was like... It was always like something like if I did that, then if I went into trucking with him, if I was to be a co driver, maybe we can make it together. And, you know, this whole thing with him wanting to marry me, I thought felt like it would have, it would have been easier for us if he would have just, if I was his co driver. You know, I, I, so, I feel, I mean, you know, call me crazy or something like that, but I feel that if, if you guys, is not in a tough relationship uh cold uh you know boyfriend girlfriend situation in trucking never works out i I, i've seen way too many too many incidents where either the girl get mad at the guy or the guy get mad at the girl and they don't want to be bothered with each other no more drop me off right here kick me out right here take me back to the terminal it never works out I, i just feel that if uh, a couple that wants to get into that that wants to get into truck uh, that gets into trucking and wants to be you know co drivers and everything like that. First thing first, you got to make sure that if you boyfriend girlfriend, you got to make sure that the relationship is tight because that's gonna that's being in the truck is really gonna test your relationship out, especially. If y'all brand new to it now, as far as as far as veteran couples goes, like if they've been together for years, if they've been together for years or anything like that, or a married couple, 
that decide to get into trucking and all like that, that seems to work out a lot better than new couples just to, you know, just to say, oh, hey, let's let's get in and let's do this. You know what I'm saying? Your relationship and your bond got to be tight. So I guess your I guess your bond with with him at the time wasn't wasn't tight enough to to uh to do the cold driving thing, huh? Or the team driving thing. No, that that actually had nothing to do with it. Because I'm I'm the type of person I am. I think I am one of the I'm probably one of the easiest people to deal with as far as men because I'm not I'm not I don't I'm not I don't get too aggy. I don't get too aggy. I'm not too not to not like that. Not I just. I don't know, I'm not, I'm just not like at most things. That's why I told you, I'm not like most females. The things that, the, the, our problem were stuff that had to do with the relationship, period. Because he loved me in his truck. When I would, I used to take time off and just go with him on the road. And he kind of wished we could have did it on the regular. Wish I was his co-driver because of the fact that I was so easy to deal with more than the guy who, who he was training that was in the truck. You know, I actually, you know, and then I'm a, I cook. So I'm like, I, like I do now, I cook in my truck. I, when I, he was talking about like how he was eating out and everything, I, I, I made him start buying utensils to cook in the truck. So I would cook in the truck for him every time. So he always had home cooked food on the truck, you know, and stuff like that. So he was like, you know, he would wish I could have been his co driver. And that's when I chose to, do trucking because of that because I knew how good we were together on the, the road and I'm the type of person I've done I've done construction with my family I'm I don't everything every reason that most females wouldn't get into trucking was not a fear for me because you know I'm, I'm I did a lot of things you know I could build a house I could build a house ground up I could do framing I could do plumbing I could do I can I can um do mechanic I can do like light mechanic work, light electrical, you know, so it's like I am this was like easy, cheesy, like compared to what I already done. All right. So kind of so all right, so you uh so again we we going back a span of ten years. Where did you uh, where did you where did you go to get your CDL? You said you got your license, and then a couple months you got your your CDL. Where did you go to get your CDL from? Did you go to trucking school, or did you go to uh, a trucking company? Where did you go? I went to um, AIT. It wasn't. It was based. It was. It's based out of Phoenix, but it was a, a branch in um, in Fontana, but it's now, which is now a um, a uh, a say or so whatever you call them. Mm-hmm. What do you call them? Sias or something like that. Uh, not sure. I don't remember the name of that. Yeah, it's a, it's a. I'm trying to, you know, I can't remember how how they say their name. It's like Sias or a Sias, something like that. Sias. <laughs> but yeah, pretty much. I was in five. Did it out of Fontana. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So after you, uh, after you, mm-hmm. after you, uh. Uh, came out, you know, came out with your with your CDL and everything. Uh, what was what was the first what was the first few uh, trucking companies experience was like? Um, I stayed at Swift for like four years, I think. How, three or how, year, three or four years. How many years? years? Four years, oh, I think. Okay, okay, okay. Swift. All right. Yeah. yeah. See, I don't, I don't down, I, yeah, I, don't, I, love- I don't down talk Swift no more. I mean, you know, there's, there's just some, there's some good drivers, and then there's some bad drivers with Swift. It's just that. Yeah. Well, I didn't the- get trained by Swift too. I'm trained through another place, but I went, you know, and I just, you know, everybody just get that name, and I think it's just based off of just people and their, their experiences and. You know, I don't know what those people that do be messing up and causing Swift to have a bad name did. But me personally, 
I had a great time with Swift. I had I only left Swift to grow. All right. So from from there, how how many trucking companies in the span of ten years that you've been with? Oh, um, let me see. I, I might as well, we just went up with count together. Uh, you you can I just give me Swift, a ballpark. <laughs> We were, we went from so I came in traffic is five I think five about five is Swiss okay I think it's five about five all right Swiss J B Hunt um National Carriers Cook and you, yeah five you know I I talked to uh I talked to National Carriers um National Carriers wanted me to be a, a over the road driver and i i don't think I, I don't think in my in in my career right now where i'm at i don't think over the road is for me anymore um when you was with uh national carriers did did you have to go over the road with them or or was you regional yeah i did i did regional over the road so i still went to texas and kansas and all that uh, but I was based out of California until they closed the California their California um, plant. So then it was like over the road. But then, mind you, I also I couldn't stay there too long with them because I was tired of it. I was just tired of it because they've grown now. They've grown now, and that area that they would have me in has grown now. But I'm a city girl. And I was going to places like Liberal, Kansas, and Dodge City, where there was no service for T-Mobile, you know, and the only thing you could have technically was AT&T. Right. That's, you know, so, I, I suggest. You know, like, that was, like, literally, like, the only thing you could have out there is AT&T. So I was, like, so irritated because I wasn't going to leave my plan. I was not going to leave this service. I was for over some, some um over an area that I was going through that I could just change. And it wasn't like the pay was worth, you know, switching over anyways and getting a Verizon or AT&T phone for that bill. Nah, it wasn't worth it. Mm-hmm. So, well, that's what's up, man. I just. <laughs> that's what's up. I, I, I'm with, uh, I'm with T-Mobile and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty cool with them. I mean, you know, there's some areas like, Wisconsin and you know little little uh rural areas there that I would lose uh service with but you know overall my my overall experience with uh T-Mobile has been great. I mean, I honestly I, honestly I I really I really haven't had no 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 big issues uh with T-Mobile. I mean, I you know that blackout that happened about uh about a month ago. I called them up. They they credit, you know, they gave me a credit for that little that little time they was blacked out. That was cool. Uh but as far as as far as uh cell service goes, I mean, you know, like I said again, I I honestly don't have no issues. I mean, I just came I I just came to get used to certain areas that I go into and I would lose uh, sales service, but for that for that purpose alone, you guys should invest in in the CB. You know what I'm saying? Just just in case, you know, just in case y'all don't have sales service and you know y'all get into a particular situation. Yeah, that's what I did. So yeah, so all right, so sunshine. Um, I met you uh some time ago. Uh, you know, we was b- uh, back in uh. Uh, back in the Zello days, uh, are you are you still active on Zello? Yeah, on and off because I also do. I I'm on and off there because I do more live streaming now. Mm-hmm. So I'm more online on Bigo Live. Um, than anything, and a paid host. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you say you do a lot of live streaming. You, where you, I came across, uh, it, are you? Do you do it in your Facebook group? Uh, what is that? Phenomenal, phenomenal women in trucking. Yeah, I have my own. I have a, a group on Facebook called Phenomenal Women in Trucking that I created when, um, back in the days when um, me and Real Queen used to hang around a lot. Mm-hmm. Tell. 
It was more uh, based off our based off of our friendship. Why I created it. Tell a little, tell a little bit more about uh about the group. What, what's the uh, what's what's the mission of the group? What's well, the, the group, and I still, and mind you, I'm slacking on that because I'm doing my live stream more, and I I actually within the while meditated with my sister, and I decided to uh kind of collab the two with my live stream and on Facebook. I mean on on um be alive and my live streaming on facebook so i was decided i wanted to live stream more on facebook to stay more active within my group okay but i created i originally created phenomenal women because i had um one it was to one it was to to talk about one the fact that we don't have to look like the quote unquote large march, mm-hmm. you know. I don't know. I don't know how old you are, but you know, back when you back when Pee Wee Herman was around and all that, you know, there was his his friend that used to come over with a truck driver, female truck driver named Large March, and she was like butchy, and you know, and that was like the biggest joke. So, um, I chose to create that group one to show that that there's a new version of Large March mm-hmm. and she's hot and she's sexy. Whether she's big, whether she's um, small, tall, whatever. It's, it's so many different forms of us. It's just basically, it was one, to show that. Two, to give women a place to come and talk and, you know, one, converse about where is it, what is it that they're going through out there that, you know, that we don't, when we get into a lot of these trucking groups that are uh, ran by mainly men, it's like, almost like our opinion isn't really valid or they don't really want to hear what we got to say. You know, it's, 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 it's valid, but to a certain extent, you know, sometimes it'd be more, it don't really get there. It don't really get to where it's supposed to get to, you know, because it'd be like sidewall, something about, um, something about our um, our looks or whatever our, or whatever it is or you know and we actually have you know true our true complaints it might even be something just as simple as nails or whatever and where to go get our nails done at or you know where's a comfortable place to go get your truck work on without having to worry about um, a mechanic being an a-hole and you know trying to get your phone number or trying to you know, do all kind of extra stuff, you know? Okay, okay. So, you know, or kind of raise the price on you because they think you don't know what you're doing. So you you mentioned uh, you mentioned Roll Queen. Uh, you know, I you know I I'm, I'm subscribed to her on uh, on YouTube as well as uh, as well as a friend of hers on Facebook and other f- social media outlets. Um, as a matter of fact, mm-hmm. I'm trying to I'm trying to get her. Uh, trying to get her on, but she's been, a, you know, she's uh, busy. Uh, I've seen a few of you guys in uh, pictures together. So, uh, are you, uh, are y'all, uh, are y'all real good friends? What's, what's the relationship with uh, Royal Queen? How did you come across her? Uh, we cool. We cool. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we were we were real, when I was local, we were real, really close, so we cool. Okay, okay, okay. Um, all right. So right now, right now, what what are you? What's your status right now? Are are you are you still over the road? Are you local? Are you regional? What what are you right now? I'm over the road. I'm I'm over the road. I'm with a company right now. Oh, so that's based out of um, based out of Michigan. Oh, okay, so you still so you still over the road. Yeah. Um, well, I went back over the road because I was actually local for about three years, mm-hmm. I think. So you and I went back over the road um, in 2018. You, you miss because I yeah, miss you it. miss being over the road. So you, so you did. Deter- yeah, and I hate and I hate. I I have a a slight hate. Like I don't hate. It's like hate is a strong word, and I don't know how. To, I have a strong dislike for California. There we go. 
<laughs> so it's, it's so it's time. It's so like, is it is it time for you to move yet? You you figuring you figuring out where the where the next place to live? Yeah, my medic. I had a re- it's, like I said, I had a recent meditation on a lot of different changes in my life, and that was another one because I was like, I what, where am I? You know, where should I move? Like, in my meditation with my meditation with my sister, and she's like, I think. You need to go where you need to be happy, where you're happy at. Where do you feel relaxed at? Where do you feel? Every time I go to, I can be laying in my truck and I'm relaxed when I'm in Georgia. I, why, you know, why did I, I could be why, in why, a, it, why no. did I, why, why did I knew that, that Georgia was going to be, was was gonna huh? is gonna be what would you gonna say that you want to go to? I mean, I I talked to I, I, I talked to so many I talked to so many drivers, so many females that are from Georgia and that has moved to huh? Georgia to migrate down to Georgia. I mean, Georgia's getting crowded. I mean, Georgia is like the next uh, New York now, as far as Me far as, as far as traffic and. And population goes, man. Yeah. So I mean, Georgia. Right. So is, is you putting plans in motion to get down there, or are you still, or are you, or is this? Is yeah, this- I actually am. I have a friend who, um, who, um, see, you know, I kind of. That's one thing I love about social media, live streaming, and all this other stuff. You get to meet different people. So I have a, a homeboy that um that rents property in Atlanta, and he wants me to rent one of the properties out there. Okay. He's trying to get somebody, like, he wants to, he's tired of the, the men that's renting it, and he wants somebody, especially since I'm always gone, he feels like it's safer than having, you know, somebody that's not, you know, that don't drive trucks, or that, that, you know, like certain people, you know, a lot of people do their home, you know, and I have a better understanding for the renting process. So, he wants me to rent it, and I'm like, uh, okay, maybe. Okay, okay, that's what's up. So, that's what's up. All right. So, um, but I'm giving that a good look. Is maybe downtown Atlanta, or you know, I don't know. <laughs> yes, sir. I also thought about Covington. My uncle lives in Dallas, Georgia. I was thinking about that. So it's a little smaller. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. So. Well, Sunshine Martin, I appreciate you coming on right quick for a brief chat on the Lockout Man podcast show. Um, ten year driver, much success because I, I have yet. I mean, I I know women that's been in this industry a lot longer than that. But for the females that that makes it past the ten year mark, uh, that's that's a that's a good milestone for you. You know what I'm saying? A lot a lot of females a lot of females don't have the fortitude to you know to to make it uh, to make it this long. So um, is there is there an end game to to this trucking with you? You got. You got you got plans outside of trucking, or what? What, what are your plans for uh, for retirement? You you gonna retire out of trucking, or what? What you gonna do? I don't think I don't know. I mean, I'm trucking. Driving is more of my body, but it's not my relaxation. So, like that's why I work the company I'm at right now because I do whatever I want without even being in the company. You know, without being dealing with the big company stuff. Okay, that's what's up. So, uh, I'm, you know, I kind of, I kind of see myself, I kind of see myself here. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. That's that's good to know. You know, I kind of see myself still. Now I don't. I'm not saying I'm here at this company. I might finally y'all give on track, but I mean, a lot of these plans to. But um, definitely, I'm not going to get out of track. Now. I see. For a long time, because I love all it. All right, all right, that's good to know. Hey, you, you, before you get up out of here, man, do you have any uh, tips or advice for new drivers, new female drivers that's coming in this industry? You got any uh, advice for them? Um, a few. Uh, I mean, one, find as many. One, uh, 
put yourself for especially women, put yourself out there in the public more like not public like to where you're per where you're insecure. But the reason I say put that is so that people see you. Because, you know, the more you're seen, the less likely you are to get snatched and get you know, so um find you know, uh there's apps like Life uh three sixty. I the, my sister and my nephew and my niece have it. I uh, and so at, at all times my family knows where I'm at. They know what I'm doing. They they I call them and let them know what I'm doing. You know, um if you choose to, to park at night, park somewhere where you can hear it where if something was to happen you'll be able to hear it and you can't just easily get snatched up. So which means no rest areas. Try your best not to go into rest areas. Stay in like truck stops, lit truck stops. Not too many of the mom and pop truck stops. If you go in a mom and pop truck stop, wrap your seatbelt around your door. Um, if you're driving at night and um, you go go pick up a, a teddy bear from um, from Love and a big teddy bear from Love and put it in your front seat, that'll keep a lot of the drivers from thinking that you're by yourself. They'll pick up a man in the truck with you. Um, or any kind of decoy, just something that lets people think somebody's in the truck with you if you're so low. If not, if you're team, then you're a little bit more secure, you're a little safe paper oh. but um that's pretty much it um all right all right you know and and believe believe me your excuses are mainly the reason why you can't do some of the things you can get your nails done out here you can get the hair dump dump bump and done out here you can do everything you want to do you it just take a little um longer to do it if you want to take a bath every day you take a bath every day you gotta take a little longer to take your bath, you gotta get a hotel. Or something. You know, it's, it's always something you can do. You don't have to be the nasty truck drivers that don't take showers or baths, okay? All right. You can take. All right, Sun- <laughs> Sunshine Martin, y'all. <laughs> Sunshine Martin. Um, I appreciate you coming on right quick. You know, again, talk, uh, chopping it up with me. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with me on the Lockout Men podcast show, you can do that. You can hit me up by getting at me in the Gmail. That's lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can go over to Instagram and hit me up over there at Lockout Men. Or you can text me, 216-600-2090. You know, we can set up a time and a date and we can get on and get it. I mean, get on and chop it up and get your experience out there. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. And make sure you hit that all button so you can receive the content like this. Uh, I got somebody... I'm not sure who I'm going to have play me out, but while they're playing me out, I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And don't forget the, the lights. You know what I'm saying? The lights do work, you know, and they do help the channel. And if you want to support the channel and then support me, you know, hook me up with some coffee, man. I'm, I'm thirsty up in these uh, streets right here. You know what I'm saying? A cup of coffee, you know, hook a brother up. The link is in the description. And on that note, uh, and on that note to my special guest, Sunshine Martin, thank you again for coming on. And uh, we are gone. You know what I'm saying? I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. All right, so we do you... Yeah, so tell me what's the point of that? I see a bottle and I think I need some more of that. So I pour it in the morning, I feel sort of bad. Because all these 40s that I ordered are just broken glass. Uh, I let the fame shit gas me. I went and did the same shit last week. I'm so angry that I can't be happy. I lose a pissed lunatic, they can't get past me. I've been trying to go find another route, but in the meantime, I'm a.